Harnessing the power of data is key to the success of organizations. And in today's fast-paced landscape, organizations need to immediately react to data. Developers need a way to get real-time applications in production quickly, update continuously, and reach millions and billions of users with zero downtime. Today, I'm excited to show you how you can use Google Cloud Platform technologies to build applications and systems that can react quickly to provide real-time insights. My name is Vidya Nagarajan, and I lead product management on Google Cloud. In today's session, I hope to show you how you can leverage our serverless and orchestration products to rapidly build applications that react to events in near real time without managing a server. We think it is the future, and there is no better way to learn about this than directly from our customers. I'm excited to kick off this session with a guest, Antoine Castex, enterprise architect at L'Oreal. Antoine will talk about how his team was able to use serverless compute and analytics to deliver customized and inclusive beauty experiences. Over to you, Antoine. Thank you so much, Vidya, for the invitation. It's a very big pleasure for me to be there with you and all the attendees. But before speaking with you in details about the implementation, let me introduce very quickly some, some key words about L'Oreal. L'Oreal is a 100 years old company with 90,000 people working in more than 50 countries over the world. Most important fact is the ambition of L'Oreal. The ambition is create the, the beauty that moves the world. And it is very important for you that even if L'Oreal is not and will be never an IT company, it's a tech company. And that's the reason why we are still today the first number one cosmetic beauty company over the world. So now how we manage this, the complexity of implementing a data warehouse in serverless. The complexity is synchronization between different data coming from internal, coming from external, data sources across organization, retail, e-commerce, all the different sources that we can have. This means a very, very large footprint in terms of complexity, in terms of sustainability. And at the end, that's the result is also a vendor-specific process because of different language, different technology. Let me tell you the non-negotiable principle that we have. And they are very, very simple. First is the developer experience. Because again, our company is not an IT company. We want to let the developer focus on the insight of the data and not on the infrastructure. That's why we say no ops, because we don't want to manage that. Secondly, the event-driven architecture, which is very, very important. We are in the future and the future is starting now. So the architecture choice that you made are very important for that in terms of scalability for the future. And at the end, the security and the sustainability. Security with the zero trust principle, for example, with the single sign-on and the sustainability based on pay-as-you-go model. Now let's talk about the architecture itself. The architecture that we have chosen choose is very simple and you can see it right now but the most important stuff you have to remember is the elt instead of the classic etl that you have certainly see a lot of time before etl was you transform the data before loading it into your data warehouse elt is now you push the data as fast as possible in its raw format without any modification and you do the transformation later on the data warehouse which is here, BigQuery, the serverless data analytics solutions of Google Cloud. And based on that, if you need additional feature, additional transformation and stuff like that, we use Cloud Run because in Cloud Run, you can take any container, any library that you need to do everything what is possible. Based on that, we also use Event Arc to trigger event based on different events that we have choose and workflow to orchestrate all the different queries and modifications that we want to do on the data. At the end, what's the result of that? The result of that is a huge amount of data in terms of storing. The, the storage of this data house represents hundreds of terabytes and we process more than 20 terabytes per month. The data is coming from 
as I said before, multiple and different sources. That results in a lot of data set, data set and tables. And all these things are coming into BigQuery, a non-demand processing data warehouse where you only pay for what you use. And again, it's the same for CloudRun. So that's very big news for you. At the end, we also improve the developer experience because now everybody share the same ways of working, speaking one only language, which is the SQL. So for the conclusion, let's, let me speak with you about the carbon footprint because the sustainability is very important for Royal and not only for the company, but also for its customer. You have the carbon footprint of Google Cloud here to help you to measure, monitor, and let you make some decisions. You have the cloud region picker, which is also here to let you choose the best region based on what you need. At the end, that makes you take the best decision in terms of architecture, because remember what I said, the choice you will make will, will, will change for the future your application and the experience of your customer. And at the end, all of these initiatives are part of the L'Oreal for the Future program, which is not only an IT program, but mainly an enterprise program. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And back to you, Vidya. Thank you, Antoine. Now let's discuss the programmable cloud. As you've just seen from L'Oreal, our serverless and orchestration products empower developers to rapidly build applications that react to events without having to manage a server. L'Oreal was able to rapidly build a business critical platform by effortlessly connecting multiple services, driving business insights at high velocity. We call this use of technologies to connect services effortlessly in order to deliver data insights and drive business transformation, the programmable cloud. At this point, I hope you're asking, how do I leverage this event-driven approach? It helps to first understand the types of service integration patterns that you can implement on Google Cloud. Asynchronous event-driven patterns, like what we saw with L'Oreal's beauty tech platform, makes it possible to respond to triggers or events. When this happens, then do that. To enable this pattern, developers can use Event Arc to trigger any compute, such as Cloud Functions, Cloud Run, or a workflow that executes a combination of Google Cloud, third party, and custom services. Synchronous extensions augment the existing functionality of other GCP services. For example, Developers can use Cloud Functions as part of a BigQuery SQL query with the new remote user-defined functions that integrate data analysis and reporting with complex procedural code and business logic. Now let's double-click into asynchronous event-driven patterns with EventArc. I'll first talk about the destinations that EventArc supports. EventArc is Google Cloud Platform's event bus that allows you to asynchronously deliver events from within and outside of Google and sends them to destinations, including Cloud Run, Cloud Functions, Workflows, and we recently added support for GKE and are continuing to add more. I'll now double click into the sources. We want to make it easy for developers by connecting anything to everything. Within Google Cloud Platform, we allow you to connect events from over 125 GCP services. We recently added over five third-party event sources, including Firebase extension events and are continuing to build even more. In addition to connecting anything to everything, we want to further delight developers by integrating and automating services. Using Cloud Workflows and Cloud Scheduler, you can combine loosely coupled services into automated event-driven solution. Cloud Tasks allows you to offload heavyweight processes to a task queue to run asynchronously to improve application responsiveness. We recently announced new workflows features like parallel steps, event arc triggers, and serverless connectors to workspace that open up even more new use cases for automation and faster data analysis and processing. Now that we've spent some time talking about asynchronous patterns, let's touch base on synchronous patterns. These patterns are powered by cloud functions and augment existing functionality of other GCP services. For example, we just went GA with BigQuery remote functions. Here, Cloud Functions, as part of a BigQuery SQL query, can call out to other GCP services and external APIs, thereby enriching analytics data. Similarly, with Blocking Functions, where Cloud Functions extend the identity platform, you can prevent a user from authenticating if they don't meet certain criteria. 
I'll now take you through a quick demo to see this all in action. Let's see an example of asynchronous event-driven transformation inspired by L'Oreal. Let's say we are a mass toy manufacturer that sells to toy stores, and we have data from two different sources, source A and source B. We want to solve a number of problems before we bring that data into BigQuery. The data structure between the sources are different. For example, the store column name is customer name in A and store name in B. We want to check if addresses in the column address are valid. Data source B also has extra columns that we want to remove. There is duplicate data in both the sources. Let's now review the architecture. We want to drop the files from source A and source B into a cloud storage bucket. From here, we want the newly uploaded files to trigger a workflow via event arc that executes functions in a particular order to transform the data. This is an Uber workflow. It will first determine which data source the file is coming from. If it is source A, workflow A will run. If it is source B, workflow B will run. We have cloud functions that rename the columns, verifies the address, and reaches the column with a unique customer ID. Data source B follows a similar flow, but there is an extra step to remove the columns that we do not need. And both of them write to BigQuery. We've already created and deployed the functions mentioned earlier. And we also have our workflow set up. The workflow at the bottom is the Uber workflow, and we have a workflow for each data source A and B. Let's now look at the Uber workflow. First, we initialize the URLs. So these are the services we want to call. Then we log the event that we are receiving from event arc. Then we switch depending on the file name. If it is from data source A, we run workflow A. And if it is data source B, we run workflow B. Then we will call either workflow A or B based on the bucket name information. You can see it visualized on the right side. There is a step to determine if it is source A or B, then we will log it and then run it. By the way, you can also run workflows in parallel. Next, let's look at creating the event arc trigger that detects the file being dropped in cloud storage. Let's call this trigger data sources. Then we can choose an event provider. We support over 125 sources from Google Cloud and third-party sources such as Datadog. We can easily search and select cloud storage as the event provider. What's awesome about event arc is that you can filter on top of cloud storage we will choose the finalized event, which is the one for new files being dropped in. We select the correct cloud storage bucket account. We will choose the service account that we already have. As you can see, EventArc has many targets available. These include Cloud Run, GKE, Workflows, and Cloud Functions. We go ahead and choose Workflows and select the Uber Workflow. And we click Create. The trigger gets created. We can go to our cloud storage bucket and upload the files from the two sources. I will upload a file from source A, wait for that to complete, and then add a file from source B. Now, when we go to BigQuery, under our projects, we see a data set for our collectible toys. And when we click into final, we see the final table. First, we see the schema with the standardized naming across both data sources, and we also see the customer ID column added. When we click into preview, we see the final combined data. The customer ID is added, the columns have been standardized, data has been deduplicated, and the addresses are all valid. Thank you. I hope you found this session helpful, and thank you, Antoine, for being with us here. We look forward to having you leverage the programmable cloud to give your customers the most personalized data-driven experiences. Do try out the new features we release to accelerate the time to value for applications that you create and manage. You can scale up infinitely and integrate signals, events, and intelligence easily to drive business transformation. Thank you again, and I hope you enjoy the rest of Next.